Hello, hello folks, all True Talks cards, hope you're well, hope you're keeping safe, that's the main thing. Uh, since I put the hard top on the 306 Cabriolet, which you're resting on the boot of at the moment, I've had a lot of questions about it and interest in it, so I thought I'd do a little piece about the hard top. I'm going to tell you what it cost, how I got it wrapped, how you fit it, how you take it off, the pros and the cons, all in this video, so I hope that's going to be interesting. Stay watching to the end because that's when I'm doing the costs. So we'll jump into it. So folks, I recently put this hard top on the 306 Cabriolet uh, and people asked me why, what was the main reason? Well, I guess the main reason was it was available, was the first thing, and they're pretty hard to get hold of nowadays. The second thing was I like the Roadster look that it gives it. I'm not sure about you, I'm not sure what you think. I like it. The third thing was, it's got a much bigger rear window and it's heated and it's glass. So actually, what I didn't know until I got it was it does transform the interiors a lot brighter with it because it's about getting on for 40% more window in the back there, I'd say, and it's obviously clear uh, it, because it's glass. So that was an added bonus. Now, you may remember if you've been watching any of my stuff that this roof was purple when I got it. Um, and I've subsequently had it wrapped in a standard 3M metallic gray wrap, which whilst isn't an exact match, I'm not sure how it looks on the camera here, but it's pretty darn close to be honest. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. You'd have to be pretty picky to go, oh, that looks obviously not the same color. It's a touch lighter in certain lights. But like I say, how that, how easy that is to see on the camera, I don't know. So I had to do a few things to it. Um, these get damaged very easily. These are just fiber, the whole thing's fiberglass, by the way. It's a fiberglass hood. Um, these side panels, um, get damaged when it's stored, so I'll talk a bit more about that. So they, um, that's still a bit scuffed, that one, so I had to fancy them up a bit. Now I'm assured that the, the ones with the Lion logo are the ones that came with the Roadster, which was the car ordered with the hard top. And the ones without, if you see them without, it's an aftermarket Peugeot part, which you could also order as an extra for your Cabrio. Quite expensive, I'm going to try and find out the exact original cost for you by the time I edit the video. So my sense is they're a couple of thousand pounds in the UK, the hard top to have as an extra. Not sure what premium the Roadster was over the standard car. But again, this one, I'm not gonna go so close on this one because I have had to repair that quite heavily uh, and it's not the best job. But from a this distance, looks grand. So anyway, what happens, how you fit these, um, and I've got some nice little pictures and details to show you in a minute. But basically it fits in four places on the car. So the two sides, um, the little flaps that are there for the hood mechanism to, to move into when you've got your hood up. Um, that's where these special fittings fit. So they bolt into the side of the car and then the back of the hood goes over those and there's a number of washers, big um, rubbery washers that are like spacers that help adjust um, the height and the fitment of the hood to make sure it's nice and snug. And in the front, they fit on the normal 
hood fitting. So they've got a normal fitting like the hoods, except it's got locks on both sides. So the normal hood's only got a lock on the driver's side. This has got locks both sides and they just hook into the um, retainers for the normal hood at the front. You've got a bolt there which you can tighten and loosen and allows you to turn the hook and that gives you adjustment on the top. So it does pay what I found because this can be creaky if it's not put on properly. It does pay to make sure that they're adjusted nice and tight. Not so tight that clearly you have a hell of a job opening and closing them but nice and snug because then that keeps that joint there snug. And these likewise you can adjust on the washers and the spacers and then when you tighten the great big nuts down on them it tightens the thing on the car. Now I'm not sure what there you're going to be able to see because it's all quite um, difficult to see now the hood's on but I'm certainly not taking it off on my own. The other thing here is you get these nice little things in the back which are quite quaint and on that side this is all um, plastic. Now the headlining I would Watch if you're buying one of these, if you manage to find one, just have a look at the headlining. I've cleaned this headlining quite significantly um, and it still doesn't look great. And what you get in a typical Peugeot fashion is you get the fabric coming off. It's got some sort of sponge underneath there. But you get the fabric coming unglued. So I've got to deal with that at some point. But believe me, this is a lot cleaner than it was. So it's worth just checking if you're paying a lot or if even if you're not paying a lot for one, what condition that now in there, mandatory connection, oh dear, what can I tell you? That attaches to, there's a loom in there somewhere which we couldn't actually find for the rear window um, heater. Now the loom presumably at the moment powers the fan that normally blows hot air onto the rear uh, screen of the hood. Now. We couldn't find ours. This looks like it's been a bit mangled up before. I get the sense from what I read that that obligatory connection is not really to do with you must have a heated rear window, but more to do with by connecting that to something other than the fan, it uh, disconnects the uh, hood mechanism so that you can't accidentally try and put the hood up when the hard top's on, because clearly I would assume that wouldn't end very well. So yeah, the hood, uh, so really how you fit this, you put the hood down, uh, the hood cover you need open and you'll see from the pictures I've attached you can get some fancy little uh, bungees that Peugeot uh, provide in a kit that holds that hood the hood cover open. Uh, and then when that's open, you basically manoeuvre the um, hard top between really two or three of you, uh, windows down, onto the car. You position the rear two um, holes over those lugs that I showed you, and obviously you position the front of the hood on the top rail of the steering. And then you connect your connector that we haven't been able to connect and you tighten a half, about a half turn on those great big um, castle nut things that are in there, tightens it at the back. And then obviously you can do the hooks up at the front and again, adjust those accordingly on the, um, on the little clasps there so that you get a good tight fit. Now, I have managed to stop this creaking because it was a bit creaky when we put it on so I've adjusted the uh, front to, to hold it a bit tighter and I've slightly adjusted the backs as well so that's that bit. Um, what does it do to the car? Well it does change actually the it does change the feel of the car somewhat so it becomes a bit more of a little um, racy coupe it sort of stiffens the car up a bit because obviously they get a bit scuttle shaky when they're uh, when they're in cabrio form. Um, it is quieter so there's obviously more insulation in here there's a big spongy bit under that under the um, headlining there um, so it's quieter uh, less wind noise you feel cosier somehow in there and like I say it's actually a bit brighter in there because of the bigger back window so I actually like the feel of it now um, people say, well, what happens when the sun comes out and then you've got your hard top on? And I go, well, luckily, since I've had this, it's done nothing 
pretty much but rain and I feel a lot more secure in it. Uh, however, what I tend to do is open the front window and the back window on both sides and then you've got basically an open sided coupe, which I will show you, I'll put some pictures up, but that's great driving about in that. No air conditioning in this car. So again, it does help enormously to be able to have those um, side windows completely down. So you've got two open sides and that's a nice environment to uh, get yourself into, I think. And I think it just makes these cars look a little bit uh, different. Now, in terms of storage, the problem comes with these, so the, I'd say they're the plus sides on it, all happy so far. The downsides of it, hard to store these. They're blooming heavy. They're quite hard to transport. The way, obviously, I transported this, which I was advised to quite rightly, was to transport it on the car. So I drove the car to where the uh, roof was. We fitted it, the guy I bought it from helped me fit it. Um, so, that was really helpful. And then I drove the car back and it's been on there ever since. Had it wrapped with the roof on. Um, they didn't need to take it off, they, they worked around it. So it's been on ever since. Now, to store it, they're actually wide. They're quite wide at this point. They're quite a wide thing. They're pretty heavy, I would guess. Again, I don't know. I'd love to find some stats on these. I would guess at 50 kilos, maybe. But they're unwieldy. Um, particularly trying to do one in the wind would not be good, I suspect, because you like holding a giant sail. So storing them is an issue because you can't really store them on either end. So you can't really tilt them up. If you tilt them up at the back, there's a danger you're going to damage your window. The front is the light bit, so it makes no sense to do it the other way. If you just put it flat, that's how the damage is done to those side pieces here and that's what had happened to this one so it, you really need to store them flat with the, with the front propped up um, and I'll show you some pictures of how uh, people do this with a little shelf but again it's not ideal um, you can get a little trolley for these as well and a cover um, but again quite space hungry if your garage is anything like mine full of Land Rovers and Peugeot wheels and stuff um, so that is a problem, which is one of the reasons why it's been on the car really ever since I've had it. So that's a downside. The other downside, I guess, is that they're rare. If you really want one, they're quite hard to find. I found one that's for sale at the moment, which I'll post a picture of here. They do come up. Um, I've seen some ropey looking ones as well uh, that need a lot of work. This one didn't really. Um, so, you know, they are quite expensive. If you want one, you're going to have to pay through the teeth on them. I don't think they add that value to the value of the car when you resell it anymore. If you, I think they will start to, but not at the moment. Um, so that's a couple of downsides uh, for you. The other thing to be careful of is if you're buying one, if you haven't got the special connectors that bolt into the side of the car uh, and you haven't got access to a spanner or a specialist tool or a spanner that will do then you, you're going to be in trouble so you won't be able to fit the hood anyway so i would check that those are available if you've got to buy those separately i'll post some pictures here they're pretty expensive and they're coming in at the moment from bulgaria i think a guy there makes them um, i'm not sure they're available from peugeot dealers if they are there'll be an arm and a leg um, but you're looking at 180 quid for those parts so if you make sure that they've got those with the roof, then uh, everything should be dandy. Okay, so what did it cost? It's a bit I know everyone's always very interested in. Well, it sort of cost what I wanted it to cost really because I bought it with the leather interior. So if you see my other video, which I'll post here, we took the velour interior out and we replaced it um, with the tan leather, which I really like, big fan of that. Um, it really lifts the car. And that was a whole lot, it was a door car, four door cards, front and rear seats, rear headrests, the whole kit and caboodle. Um, and then I got the roof as well from the same guy and I paid 650 quid for the lot. So that's why I say it sort of costs what I want it to cost. It could have cost me one pound and the interior cost me 649 or, or vice versa. I think 
um, I sort of valued it probably at about 300 quid or 350. So sort of 300 for the interior, say, and 350 for the roof. Now, the only things I've had to do to it is badly repair that. Don't look too closely. Um, that's had some paint as well, which I did. Painted that one as well, because that was all scratched. Um, so they're the only bits I've done to it myself. And then the wrapping, which has been done very nicely indeed, and I will put a link down below. That's my great big hand. I will put a link down below on who did it for me. If you live in the Midlands, um, might work for you. Um, they charged me £220 plus VAT, so it was £264 to wrap it. Uh, and I think they've done a great job. So I will do a video on this car because I haven't quite, quite, quite finished yet. I've got still got these TSW wheels on and I'm going to put these Equinox wheels on. <laughs> So I've got to get some tires for those, but when they go on, they're 16 inch, they're 15. So I think they'll look a bit nicer. When they go on, I've basically finished this car and I will go open book about all the costs. So yeah, the cost for the roof, say 350 for the roof, say 265, 270 for the wrapping. Um, so that was the, the cost for that. Let me know in the comments below whether you think that's good value or not. If you've got any questions, however, do let me know be happy to help having done this now um, got a little bit of an idea of what's going on um, please take a look at my other videos on this car because I guess at some point this year this car will be going so I have got a playlist of stuff about this car I was just going to show you this is the big old spanner that we luckily fits um, I think you need about 40 mil this is actually a um, Imperial this is an XRAF helicopter, King Dick, always makes me laugh. It's a one and one eighth and a one inch, uh, one and seven eighths, I think the other end. Um, made in England, beautiful, it's heavy. Uh, and that doubles up as a road rage tool. No, I'm only joking. Um, but that does the, um, fits the castle nuts. I mean, it's not an exact fit, but they're not really under any tension. They're just slightly tightened onto the body. So that works well for us. The tool, which I've shown you in the pictures, um, is expensive and hard to get hold of. So if you can get a big old ring span like that, knocking about a car boot sale, uh, again, I'll measure this in a bit. I think it's 40 mil or thereabouts, then that will do you nicely. Okay, so hope to see you soon. Um, subscribe if you want to. Uh, lots more videos coming down the track, particularly on French cars and my Citroen C6 coming soon. So uh, I hope to see you then. Cheers.